Acorn woodpeckers are sort of your classic clown-faced woodpecker. They store acorns in what we call granaries, where they've drilled hundreds and often thousands and maybe even tens of thousands of holes in which they individually put the acorns that they harvest in the fall. These massive granaries and the acorn woodpeckers themselves are hard to miss in the oak woodlands of California. Yet one of the bird's strangest behaviors went unnoticed for centuries. Acorn woodpeckers breed in large family groups and their unusual social lives have inspired one of the longest running field studies in the world. Scientists think these birds can help answer one of the biggest questions in evolutionary biology. Why cooperate? Walter Koenig began studying acorn woodpeckers in the 1970s. Hello. He and his team have been monitoring acorn woodpeckers at the University of California's Hastings Reserve ever since. About 1974, Walter Koenig started his long-term study, and then I've sort of taken over from Walter. These chicks are about 19 days old, and they fledge the nest at about day 32 or day 33. So once they fledge, they'll actually be fully feathered. This is our bird 6009 that we've banded in our population here over the last 45 years. At any one time in our population, there's about three to 400 acorn woodpeckers. Colored leg bands allow scientists to identify individual woodpeckers from a distance. And over the course of our study, we've probably looked at over 2,000 nests, and so it's a, a really rich data set that we have here at Hastings. There's a really interesting paper from the early 1900s uh, where the guy noticed that there were more than two individuals feeding a nest and had sort of suggested that maybe there was communism in acorn woodpecker societies. An acorn woodpecker nest can be tended by as few as two adults or as many as 15. They can be as simple as a pair of birds. You might have a male and a female breeder like a lot of birds have but they can also be more complex. So you can have more than one male breeder. We call these co-breeding males. Often one to five could be in a group. And the flip side of that is there's females, usually one to three, what we call joint nesting females because they all lay eggs in the same cavity. This arrangement with multiple male and multiple female breeders working together at a single nest is extraordinarily rare among birds. To understand the family dynamics of these groups, the team needs to figure out how the group members are related to one another. They do this using DNA from blood samples. Analyzing these genetic data, the researchers find a consistent pattern within the woodpecker groups. The breeder males are all related to one another, the breeder females are related to one another, and their offspring are of course related to both, but the breeder males are not related to the breeder females. In other words, the composition of acorn woodpecker groups usually prevents close relatives from breeding with one another. The genetic data also confirmed something that years of observation had led the researchers to suspect. Some of the adults in these groups weren't breeding at all. Uh, about a third of the population at any one time is made up of helpers who are still living in the group in which they were born and have not yet found a way to breed on their own. And so instead, they're staying there, helping to raise younger siblings. Behaviors like this that appear altruistic have puzzled biologists ever since Darwin. In evolutionary terms, individuals are only successful if they pass on their genes to the next generation. So why would a young woodpecker sacrifice its own reproductive success to help another? We think there's a constraint in the environment. The granaries are this very special resource 
that takes a lot of time and effort, literally generations, in order to produce. We estimate that it takes about 20 minutes to make each hole. And if there are 10,000 holes, if you do the math, you can see that it takes a long time. And some of these really impressive granaries we see with 50,000 holes took many, many decades to create. And so birds just simply can't go out and do this. Without a large granary to rely on, it's tough for an acorn woodpecker to strike out on its own and start a family. They'd prefer to be breeding if they could, but since they can't, the next best thing is to stay in the group in which they were born and then help to raise these younger siblings to which they're related. We humans often think that helping our relatives is simply the right thing to do, but cooperative behavior can also be favored by natural selection. Helping your parents raise an additional offspring can make evolutionary sense because we share half our genes with our own offspring, but we also share half our genes with a sibling. And so if we can help our parents raise an additional offspring, that can be evolutionarily just as advantageous as producing one offspring of our own. In other words, these adult helpers aren't just being altruistic. If they don't have opportunities to reproduce on their own, helping their parents is the next best thing. In an evolutionary sense, the helpers are helping themselves. Of course, people always ask, they say, well, after 50 years of study, how could you possibly not know everything there is to know about the species? Acorn woodpeckers have played a pretty big role in our understanding of cooperation, cooperative breeding in particular. If somebody is still studying acorn woodpeckers 40 years from now, I'm sure there'll be a lot of interesting questions that they will be trying to answer. But I really have begun to appreciate the fact that we will probably never really understand everything about acorn woodpeckers. Thank you.